What's up guys? I am Jesse with Adventure Endeavor and today we are talking kitchens. We want to show you how we kind of set up our kitchen, but most importantly we want to show you how we cook on the road, what cooking devices we like, like we have a few different ways of cooking, and we want to show you our grocery haul and our tips that we have when going to the grocery store, on the way home from the grocery store. So basically this is going to be cooking, um, setup, meal prep, all of that while RVing and hopefully these tips make it a little bit easier for you on your next RV trip or if you're a full-timer. So like always make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you enjoy the video give us a thumbs up. got our grocery haul here and one of the first things that we do is since we sometimes camp um, a long distance from where we're going shopping we always bring a big cooler with some frozen water bottles on lined on the bottom and we put all of our foods that need to stay cold in there since we're driving um, pretty long distances sometimes up to 45 minutes or an hour from where we're camping so this thing is pretty big. I'm going to load that up. Let's get going. Another thing we really like about bringing a cooler, especially a soft-sided cooler like this Arctic that we have, is that it can fit into a small space and then it's right here in the cab of the truck with us. So we can bring our own drinks. Lots of times we will make, uh, make meals or prep or bring leftovers from the day before. And that way, when we're traveling, we don't have to open the slide of our fifth wheel. Our fifth wheel, unfortunately, you have to open the slide to access the refrigerator, which from our findings, a lot of fifth wheels are like that, which is unfortunate. But this is one way to handle that issue is by bringing snacks and drinks with you. It makes it a lot easier, it makes it quicker, and you don't have to worry about opening up your slide on the side of a road or in a rest stop. It's just a little nicer, you can eat on the road, or you can pull over and have a picnic. Any thoughts on that? Uh, I was just gonna say that's one of the downsides of a fifth wheel or a trailer versus a class A. Uh, because in a class A, you can access the bathroom and the refrigerator while you're driving. That is very true, and we have a video on travel trailer versus fifth wheel versus, versus class A or RV, so we'll link that right here. Stay. Alright guys, first things first when we get back from the grocery store, we don't have a very big fridge. Most RVs don't. So we need to make sure that everything is situated in there and kind of tetris in because we only have so much space. It's plenty big enough for both of us, but we just have to make sure everything's situated and fill all the nooks and crannies and stuff like that so we can fit in all of our cold stuff. So in between our two weeks of shopping that we like to do, we try to space it out two weeks or at least a week. Everything kind of gets disorganized and, and jumbled. So we gotta reorganize everything. And we try to put things that we don't care about freezing on the top shelf because it's as close close to the freezer, so sometimes things freeze and then uh, basically it goes down in priority based on that. So normally the bottom drawer here is only for beverages. You know, you gotta have the bubbly waters, you gotta have the sparkling ices, the caffeine. And we will kinda try to put our meats towards the middle or bottom. Um, just because of the cooling, like it gets warmer down here um, than it does at the top and we need to have our meats cold, so. So organization is key in an RV refrigerator. Like, like Melissa said, we start over, we reorganize and we tend to use our door for a lot of our like condiments, stuff like that, like smaller things that it's nice to keep them organized. 
As far as food goes, a lot of people, I think, think that RVing is, is much different. For us, I mean, typically, you know, we've been doing the ketogenic diet for two years strong now, and we eat the same way. So we're still buying the same items that we buy overall, and we prep them pretty much the same way as well. So it's not that much different, but just being more organized, and sometimes you might have to take stuff out of boxes or bags or something just to condense stuff down to make more room. But other than that, it's pretty much similar. All right, guys, so that was quite a process. Um, one thing that I like to do is our older food, I try to put towards the front and the top so that we'll know to eat that first. And then the newer food goes towards the back or the bottom. So if we forget about it for a while, it's okay. Yeah, and so this trip to the grocery store wasn't that big. But lots of times when it's that big, we take all the bubbly waters out first and foremost. You take them out because if you don't have enough room, that's the first thing that's not going to be in the fridge. That's that's a luxury to have your sparkling waters cold. So this trip, we knew that the whole bottom drawer down here was bubbly water. And then um, we have our heavy cream, which I know that's a lot of heavy cream. We drink heavy cream. Our coffee. <laughs> And apparently we need a new shelf. Melissa just dropped our shelf. And then we have our meat section right here. And then what is it? Like cheese, vegetables. Cheese and veggies. And then going up, what do we have? Random dips and mushrooms. I always put mushrooms at the top and then the front because they go bad really quickly. Yep, so keep them a little colder so they last longer. And then we put our eggs on the top. We've noticed that the eggs do not freeze for us personally in our setup. So that's kind of how we just organize everything. We try to keep everything together. So if we're looking for some meat that we want to cook, it's on this shelf, it's in this area, it's all together. The cheese is all in one spot. So that helps out. Oopsies. So... This is the shelf that uh, that just broke while we were filming. So now we have another project day. Okay, so once we get the fridge organized, everything that's cold organized in the fridge and everything like that, then we move on to the pantry. Our pantry is normally not that full because we do the ketogenic diet, which is a lot of just basically fresh vegetables, cheese, and meats. So we have a few things in here. Like you can see, we have some monk fruit sweetener. We do use some um, sugar alternatives, um, some almond flour. Melissa has our teas and a few other things uh, at the top. Oh, where is it? Ugh. At the top here, we like to keep our paper plates and plastic ware, some extra spices, uh, we have protein powder, but basically it's the same thing. Each shelf is kind of organized into its own category, so when you're out and about and living, it's just easier to find stuff. So now we're in the kitchen. Sometimes I think that there's a big misconception that you know, I don't know, I think people maybe don't like using their kitchen, their stove. Uh, we use both. We use our oven for certain things. It's very rare. We do jalapeno poppers in there. But one of the main things that we use is just a cast iron skillet. Super simple, easy to clean, and uh, if you get it seasoned well, like nothing sticks to it, which is great. This is not a cooking um, episode or channel. We just want to show you the methods that we use to cook. and. Sometimes, I mean most of the time, we do like a single pan meal where we'll put some bratwurst and some bacon in there and then let that cook up and then we throw vegetables on top, let it all cook in one pan, it's easy, it's quick, it's you're only getting one pan dirty, so it's just something quick and easy. Pro tip, when you are cooking in your RV kitchen, your smoke alarm is going to be really close by. So something that we do is we actually take the smoke alarm battery out and just set it right aside when we are cooking in the RV and then we always make sure to put it back in immediately after we're done because the house fills up, house, RV fills up with smoke really quickly and it goes off every single time. This is our Green Mountain Grill Davy Crockett and it's probably our favorite way to cook overall. We do a lot of smoked meats, which we can do, you know, 10, 12, 16 hour smokes, whether it's brisket, brats, or literally anything. Obviously it gets a lot of use. The two shelves, which is great to get more room. And then as well, it actually has a pizza oven attachment. So we pull these grills out right here, 
put the pizza oven in and we do pizza. This is great, we, we've smoked vegetables on here and literally all types of meat. So just because we're full time in our trailer doesn't mean um, you know we can't eat well. So we eat really well on the road. So this is our third way of cooking. So we have our skillet, we have our smoker, which is probably our most versatile and what we use the most often. And then this is a Tembo Tusk Scottle. So basically, it's a really large wok. Your heat is in the center from one burner down here, propane canister, it has three legs which keep it nice and supported and stable. And then we will do vegetables around the outside and our meat towards the center, whether it's burgers or brats or whatever we put in the center, veggies for the outside or bread or buns that we don't really do that, but a lot of people do bread and buns. And then as well, if you put a lid, put a little liquid in there, you could get some steam going. We've done a lot of stir fries in here and whatnot. And this has been a great purchase. We got it a long time ago when we did a lot of off-roading camping trips, but we still use it now. And it's, it's nice once you get to camp and set up. So we'll get to camp. Normally we stay for about two weeks. We'll set the scottle up and then we'll set up the smoker as long as you're not in bear country. And we just leave them there. So it's pretty much like normal living. It's like going out in your backyard to, to cook or barbecue. That's what we do along with the cast iron inside. One of the things that we love having, we do have some regular ice trays here, but we just got this little ice genie ice maker. Jesse has been wanting one of these for the past year and a half since we started RVing and I finally surprised him with one the other day. So basically the way that it works, did you just fill it earlier? Yeah, it's still wet. <laughs> Water is wet, guys. Water is wet. Careful, you're spilling. Oh, I am? So uh, the way that it works is you basically fill up the container um, only part way, and then you put this little interior cylinder, push it down in here, and then it fills up the entire sides of it, and then you get like half circle shaped um, ice cubes and once it freezes then you break them off just by squeezing it like this and then you can pour them into the cylinder and then you have ice like this do the process over again to have ice. actual ice cubes <laughs> so this thing is awesome it's only about 20 bucks which you might be thinking to yourself that's excessive for an ice tray but it's really convenient to have and it's vertical and it doesn't spill like a normal ice yes tray. so far we absolutely love it it's only been uh like i don't know a few days but we will link it below in case you guys are curious to check it out all right so we got this nice mood lighting got this little bush back here the production value has just gone way up guys way up so this is about food uh coffee is not necessarily considered food but we just wanted to talk to you guys real quick about the way that we do coffee. So we actually have two different methods depending on what's going on. We'll start with the coffee pot. Very simple, very generic, you know, you fill it at the top, blah, 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 water, heat, steam, coffee. Simple, we have solar so our outlets work and it's very easy to use a coffee pot. The other method that we use is we have this simple pour over with a reusable filter. This is really nice. We've done this a lot. The reason we do this is because we like really hot coffee. And so the coffee, uh, we can get a lot hotter. We just heat up water on the stove with our tea kettle, and then we'll do a pour over. And then as well, there's certain days when maybe we both don't want coffee. Lots of times I'll do like a pre-workout before I go on a run or something. And I just don't want coffee in my system. It makes me feel too full. So, you know, if Melissa's just having one cup of coffee, it's just a little bit easier to do the pour over rather than doing the coffee pot. So those are the two ways that we use and it's worked well. So, what the hair flip? So we just wanted to make this video because I'm on a lot of forums and Facebook groups and this is a very common question. Like, what do you guys eat while you're on the road? And to be honest, we eat the same food we eat when we were in a sticks and bricks. We've been doing the keto diet since before we left. We're still doing it now, which is a lot of fresh meat, fresh vegetables. Mm, a little bit of fruits and uh, some cheese and a few things in the pantry and we seem to get by just fine with our fridge with our setup 
We showed you the three ways that we cook food and I just wanted to make this video to kind of let people know that it's not that much different than your normal way of cooking. So there's not too much to worry about. Exactly. And we almost exclusively cook in the RV or at camp. Um, we very rarely go out to eat and that's just a money saving type of a thing. Um, if we are in a certain area, we really want to get Texas barbecue, for example. Um, we have some videos about that that we'll put in the one of these corners here as well. But maybe we'll go out and splurge every once in a while, but most of the time we just cook at camp. Yeah, it saves a lot of money. It's nice, it's fun. I mean, now that we have a smoker, I mean, I make Texas barbecue. Everything tastes really good on the smoker, I gotta yeah. say. And that smoke alarm tip, guys, don't forget about your smoke yes. alarm. Lots of times uh, we'll camp with friends who are new and you hear the smoke alarm going off and we're like, oh, they're, they're newbies, you know. <laughs> but don't, also don't forget to put it back in. Yes, immediately after you're done cooking. Yeah. So, so hopefully, pay attention to that. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you guys found some value in this video or at least maybe we put you on ease a little bit. But like always, make sure you subscribe and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Bing, bing. Bing, bing. Bing, bing. And um, I guess we will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.